All right, guys, let's take a look at some waiver wire options who could be available in your league and may be able to help uh, with your fantasy team. The first one I want to talk about is a weird one. It's Mario Hazonia. He was a guy I took a lot of flyers on in late round picks in drafts, hoping that he would start alongside Kevin Knox. But uh, we all know David Fisdale and his consistency. But at the moment, Hazonia, who has gone from being out of the rotation entirely, is playing big minutes. And he, over the last two weeks, is actually a top 45 player, averaging only 24 minutes a game. It's because he's averaging 2.8 steals. It's really bumped him up there. But 12 points, he's shooting 50%. He's looking like the guy that played for Orlando at the end of last season. The steal numbers were high last year as well, 1.1 steals in 22 minutes, which is a pretty solid rate. So while it's yeah, extraordinarily elevated at the moment, even over the last uh, two months, he's averaging 2.5 steals per 36 minutes. The shooting numbers are up after a disastrous start to the season. We cannot trust what Fisdale is going to do on a game-by-game -game basis, let alone week-by-week -week basis. But for now, Mario Hazonia is putting up solid enough numbers. He's getting solid enough minutes pretty much every game. The numbers are strong. He's played over 20 minutes in four consecutive games. He scored in double digits four of the last five games. He's had multiple steals in four consecutive games, and he's shot over 50% in four of his last five games. And I use that five-game cutoff because the game before that, he was a DNP CD. And the game before that, he played five minutes. And the game before that, he was a three-time DNP CD. So it is pretty tough to get a full gauge on that. But at the moment, shit, the numbers are fantastic. And I think you have a look at him and see if he can help your team. A guy that you don't need to worry about having a look at, you just need to grab him if he's somehow still available, is Derek White of the San Antonio Spurs, available still in 45% of Yahoo leagues. He's the 35th ranked player over the last two weeks. Yes, he's shooting 66% from the field, and that's going to come down. But he can be a 50% plus shooter for the season, but he gets blocks, he gets steals, he's rebounding okay, he's hitting threes, he's scoring. The minutes are on the way up. He should not be on any single 12-team waiver wire, and to be honest, most 10-team waiver wires, he should be not on those. He should be rostered. He has locked down, I believe, the starting point guard job for the San Antonio Spurs. He's getting more confident, a larger role. He's showing us the defensive chops that he had last season and all the way back in college. Derek White is a must-roster player, in my opinion. I also think De'Anthony Melton, who's still available in 92% of Yahoo leagues, is a must-roster player. Um, 45th ranked guy over the last two weeks, despite scoring 6.5 points, but it's over a block. 2.6 steals, 5 assists, and he's only shooting 38% from the field. He's at 29 minutes per game. The minutes have gone up over 30 in two of the last three games with Devin Booker out, but they'll hover around that 25-minute mark, I would hope, and I would think that's the most beneficial for this Suns team, and I think it will continue to push up towards 27-28, even with Booker back. His value in those steals, blocks, assists categories are enough to be rostered anyway, and I think there's upside in other areas of his game. He's the guy that is Derek White from four weeks ago that you need to get on now and it will continue I don't know if it's going to get better because he's top 50 already but he's available in tons and tons of leagues so you do have to have a look at uh, at D'Anthony Mountain. Bam Adebayo is getting some extra minutes lately. Whiteside missed last game. 27 minutes over the last six games for Bam. Just sneaking inside the top 50. We know this guy is a top 50, potentially top 30 upside guy. Uh, a block a game, one and a half steals, great field goal percentage. The minutes are the, are the concern there is if he plays 18 minutes a night, he's not a reliable 12-team guy. If him and Hassan Whiteside split at 24, then he is. But trusting Eric Spolstra's rotations is very similar to trusting David Fisdale's rotations. Not quite as volatile or stupid, but there's a lot of inconsistency in there with what Spolstra does. So that makes it a little bit more confusing with Bam. But for now, the minutes are there. Whiteside's dealing with an illness. He's playing well. Then, then why not take a look? A couple of Phoenix Suns guys I want to take a look at. Josh Jackson and Kelly Oubre Jr. Now, both of these guys are getting a boost because of Booker's absence. But Jackson's putting up numbers. He's contributing across the board with steals and blocks and assists and rebounds. And the thing that's always dragged him down has been the terrible shooting, but it's okay at the moment. So you can have a look at Jackson. I would prioritize him over Oubre, but if we're looking at Sun strictly, I would have Melton over both of those guys. Jackson is an interesting short-term guy, and it may proceed long-term um, if he starts to get more confident and the Suns get more confident in him. Oubre's had a couple of strong games lately, but I don't really love him as a 12-team league guy. I'm mentioning him here because he is available still in 50% of leagues, and you could get some short-term value, especially if you're looking for points. But over his last seven games, he's averaging 15 points, and he's doing it on 49% shooting. 
but still not a top 100 player because he doesn't get assists, defensive numbers lack, he's a poor rebounder, he doesn't hit a ton of threes, and he's usually quite inefficient despite this recent string of uh, shooting at a high percentage. So I think he's okay. He's uh, a fringe-ish 12-team league guy, not a must-roster player. But uh, at the moment, with uh, Booker out, he's putting up some good numbers. Tyus Jones, another name to pay attention to. I really, really like Tyus. You've heard me talk about him for a long time. I'd be more than happy for the Wolves to run him over Jeff Teague or Derek Rose. I don't know if Ryan Saunders is going to do that. But over the last uh, seven games, he's played 27 minutes a night now. Granted, a big chunk of those were without Teague and without Rose, but Rose has got to the ankle injury, came back, he was out again. Teague had an ankle injury, came back, hurt it again. We don't know what the long-term prognosis is for both of those guys, but Jones should be getting 20-plus minutes a night most nights, should be, and he can play alongside Rose and Teague pretty comfortably. His ability to get assists and steals makes him like a Marcus Smart-type value player in fantasy, and yeah, if you believe that there's going to be some weird move going on with Timber the Timbers, I don't necessarily, but for the moment, it is trending a little bit in Jones's, uh, in Jones's direction, plus t uncertainty with the two other guys who could be cutting into his value makes him an interesting stash-type add. Timothy John McConnell of the Philadelphia 76ers, it provides similar sort of value to TJ McConnell, 107th ranked player over the last two weeks, giving you two steals a game, almost five assists, 57% shooting, and the minutes have been up with a combination of Embiid missing, with Butler missing, with Wilson Chandler struggling at times. McConnell is uh, providing a solid role off the bench, and if you need those two categories, he can be used. He's uh, available in 92% of Yahoo leagues, the same amount as DeAnthony Melton. Now I'd have Melton over McConnell pretty comfortably, but TJ can fill that role, and we're into that stage of the season where we're not 100% just hunting upside, because if you're continually hunting upside at this point of the season, especially if you're struggling, you're not going to be able to make up that ground. So it might be just time to, hey, let's just get the production in. Let's solidify ourselves. Let's get ourselves into the playoffs rather than, oh, shit, this might be good in March when the playoffs come around and then you're sitting in eighth spot and not actually participating in the playoffs. So we are sort of in that transition period where we're looking for value or looking for production rather than theoretical production. The next guy I want to look at, I think, fills both of those boxes. That's Kevin Herter of the Atlanta Hawks. A massive 38 minutes a game over the last six. 16 points, three and a half assists, four rebounds. He's oh, sorry, the 99th ranked player. I don't worry all that much about Prince and Bazemore returning. I feel really confident that, uh, that Herter will continue to start alongside Prince. That was the case before Prince's injury with Bazemore coming off the bench and Herter was playing 30 minutes a night. His confidence is up. He can contribute in multiple categories. And the Hawks are going to look to continue to develop him. I think that he, I know that he's available in 68% of Yahoo leagues, and I think he is, and I've been saying this for weeks and weeks now, that he is a, uh, a, a pretty close to a must roster guy. Jeff Green. My name is Jeff. He's the 114th ranked player over the last two weeks, available in 58% of Yahoo leagues. He continues to start for whatever goddamn reason over Otto Porter. And he's playing some minutes here, not only as power forward, but getting a lot of the center minutes. We're seeing Thomas Bryant be limited. Jan Mahin is not necessarily always playing. And Green is getting those minutes, averaging 33 minutes a night, 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. That can be valuable, especially, say, in a 14-team roto. But even in a 12-team league, there is some short-term value for Green. But he's not that must-hold-on-to type of a player that you've got to have and you've got to deal with through thick and thin. You add him, his value there. If it drops off, then you move on. It's not a high-priority type of a guy. And the last guy I want to talk about is Emmanuel Moutier, who is probably rostered in most leagues, but still 48% available in Yahoo, uh, 30 minutes over the last uh, last couple of weeks. Look, the issue with him is uh, percentages. It's dropped off recently, 38% from the field. But I still think that he is a 12-team league guy. You've got to be able to deal with that negative in the field goal percentage category. And if you can't, then fine, move on, get grab someone else. But 15.5 points, 5.5 assists, and 1.2 steals with 3.3 rebounds over his last six games it is clearly valuable. He's been in and around that 12-team mark most of the season. He's probably better suited to points leagues formats, but I still think that he has appeal in 12-team category leagues as well. And that'll do it for the waiver wire ads uh, for this coming week in the NBA.